What's up YouTube? I'm Sketchy Brett, YouTube sketchiest artist. And today we're carrying on the theme of minimalist urban sketching. And the inspiration for this video comes from you guys because I've picked this out of the comments. A few of you have been asking me, how do I choose what to include and what to omit when doing minimalist urban sketching? So what I've done is I've collected five reference images. They're all very different so that I can show you how I approach it for each of those images. And we're gonna do very minimalist sketches for each one of them. And the last one is really complex. So stick around for that. So let's jump into the first one now. So this all centers around us finding what is distinctive in the image. So if we look at this first one, the most distinctive feature is actually not the building. It's these little umbrellas on the outside. So we want to put those in first and build our image around that because they're also in the foreground. So we need to make sure that we're not going to find ourselves in a position where we don't have space for them. So that's the first defining feature of, the, of this image. Then we start to look, well, what else is distinctive? The building itself, nothing overly distinctive. So we can leave a lot of that out. So already I'm leaving most of this building out. We just want to keep this defining feature. Obviously, we don't want to completely omit the building. So we've got a window here. We've got a door here, but we don't need all the details on the door. We've got windows here. Now, again, I could put in all the cottage panes, but by doing so, I'm losing the minimalist effect in the same way that I don't put the chairs and all of these funny things that are hanging around. We've got this tree off the side. Now that's quite distinctive but it can also be very minimalist. So without putting too much detail into that, then we work our way up. We've got this little architectural piece here that sticks out so we can put those in because it's again a distinctive feature. But now, we don't want to put too much else. We've got this sign here that again makes it distinctive. So we do the illusion of writing because we don't want to put in the exacts. We've got a door around it and another door next to it. And that's about all I'm going to put there because if I start doing more, I start to lose that minimalist Effect. and we only want what's making it distinctive. Again, window, side of the building, that's all we're gonna need. Now our next defined feature is gonna be this railing because it's distinctive. It's something that draws our eye in. And if you're struggling to work out what is distinctive, Always ask yourself, what makes this building this building? Like, what is it that caught my eye? So that's what you're gonna concentrate on. So now we've got a roof up here, roof along there. We don't have to put in all the tiles because that's not what defines it. Whereas an Italian building with terracotta tiles, that might very well be what you concentrate on. So we put even the shutters very minimalist because that's not what we're concentrating on. Got a window here. Now there's all sorts of details happening along the side here. We're going to leave all that out. That is it. We've Got our distinctive features, this little sign, the tree, the umbrellas at the front, and this railing. More than that, I would leave everything else out. So that's our first one. 
Let's move on to number two. Now in number two, we've got quite a busy scene. So we have to be very careful what we look for and what's distinctive. First of all, we've got this man standing here. And for the same reasons as the umbrella, we want to put him in first. So we've got him and he's very much distinctive in this scene. The other thing that I find very distinctive is these lamp posts or lanterns sitting up here. So while maintaining our minimalist way of sketching these, we keep that minimalist, but those definitely have to go in. Now, we can then choose at this point, do we want a lot more or not a lot more? So we've got another one of these lampposts, lantern sort of jobbies here. So we put that in and then we've got to choose. We've, we've got a decision to make. Do we put in all of these awnings? No, I wouldn't put them all in. I think there's too many. I would now just concentrate on the basic shapes of the buildings. And here I would be very minimalist because otherwise it's gonna start drawing away from this image. Now, some of you might have seen this bicycle and found, well, you know, to you that's very distinctive. Then put it in. If not, leave it out. But if it was something that caught your eye, and this is where you start to become the curator of what is and isn't distinctive. Now there's other people along here, you might wanna put some of them, you might've found them distinctive, but I would be careful not to put too many because we don't want to take away from our most distinctive feature, but we wanna maybe show that he's not alone. Then the building comes here, there's a bit of a turn up here and it goes back up there. And right, there's a lot that I could put in and there's a lot that I can leave out. And it's really about leaving most of this out. There's a whole nother building at the back here. I would leave it out completely. There's tables and fruit and all of that. I would leave it out. I might put a, a gesture a suggestion of it. The boxes, they're quite interesting and they add a nice dimension, so I'll put them in slightly. And then we've got this other awning. And again, I would keep that very minimalist. Now, if we look, there's tons of windows and things along here. And at the moment, oh, there's another lantern as well. So we'll put that in because it's become our distinctive feature and there's a hell of a lot going on in terms of windows here and we don't want our lanterns to kind of just look like they were the only thing on here so we can put in some of them but work on shape right so we've got an opening here so we just put that and we rather than going and doing full windows as well as keep them don't try and square them off and then put the frame and then the glass and then the cottage pane that's where you start to go wrong you want to just give shape form and some basic almost ideas of windows and and such So in this image, we've concentrated on our lanterns, the bicycle, and then these people, specifically this man at the front. That's number two. Number three. So number three, we've got this really dilapidated building. Immediately the most distinctive features are this broken sort of overhang that's gotten all messed up. So we definitely want that. 
we've got these nice triangular eaves that go over these windows. So we can put those in. Now this wouldn't normally be the way in which I would go about it. I wouldn't normally do it necessarily in this order, although you could, but I want to show these features and then show you how we would then work around it. Now, the columns are quite distinctive as well, I would say, but then there's a lot of noise happening in the front of it. And that's where I would start to leave things out because they're unimportant to the scene. We've got a doorway, we've got another window. There's a whole lot going on here, but I'd rather just put in this column. Now, off of this, we've got the roof. And then lastly, we've got what really caught my eye in terms of this whole image, which is this, what do we call it? Um, almost like a wind vane that's sitting there. Now, this I want to spend a little bit of time on because this is very much the distinctive feature, if you ask me, in terms of this entire image. So you can see we've left out a lot. We don't need the tiles. We don't need all of these textures. You might want to put the odd line or something like that. You might want to suggest brickwork with some lines like this or even a brick. But we don't want to, I see there's a second column there. If we start to fill up this whole front, it all starts to merge together and we, we lose this minimalist effect. So that's number three. And you can see how easy that one was. So number four I've chosen because it's a very, very busy scene. There's stacks of people, there's these buildings on either side and these wires that come across. So I look at this and I go, well, what's distinctive? This guy at the front, who's got this sort of striped shirt, and then there's a guy with a cap off the side of him, and then another guy wearing a hat. Those are the distinctive people out the front for me. Then there are other distinctive people, but I kind of like this trio here. Maybe this person who's sort of pushing this, I think it's a pram, that's quite interesting. But beyond that, the rest of this crowd that sort of runs all this way is kind of not all that exciting to me, maybe a little bit lower. So I then want to focus on, there's a big board up here and then these buildings I'm going to largely leave out because I've got this idea of the buildings, but I've got this big signboard that is the distinctive thing on that side. Then on this side, we've got the shapes of the building. So we're going to put those in. And then we've got this sign again that runs along the, the top, another distinctive feature, right? And then we've got one coming in from the side and another one over here. Now, if we were doing color, this would obviously be in red. And that would make that one stand out. So here I'm almost just running my leading lines. They would almost be guidelines in another image. This one had windows or doors along it. I'm almost kind of focusing on textures rather than the actual elements. So this side, on the left here is further away. There's less detail. And then on this side, I put in a little bit more detail and then I've got all these people. So now there are other people. So 
we want to at least show that there were other people because otherwise we lose this image of a crowd. But we don't want to take away from the people that we made distinctive. And the way to do that is to not make full forms. So we've got a few body shapes out the front and then it becomes heads, you know, and towards the back it almost is dots and disappears. That way we don't lose these distinctive people in the crowd. Now, the other thing is there's these wires. So now there's a wire that runs up here and that for me is gonna ruin our composition. But we've got another bunch that are running this way and those are quite nice. So I would run those. So we've got distinctive people in the front. We've got this board on the side here. We've got these wires hanging across and then we've got this building that's kind of built up of signboards so that's what we've concentrated on and then we've built up the rest even more minimalist so sometimes it's not about completely leaving an element out but rather reducing how much detail you've got on an element so that's number four Number five, and I promised you a complicated one. So here it is. And we're gonna be very minimalist with this one. We're gonna leave out all sorts of things. So we're gonna start at the top. We've got a dome. Now I know there's a lot more to that dome than I'm putting there, but for the sake of this, we wanna get an idea of what we can leave out. So we go, down one piece at a time. Now, obviously these domes on the side are important, so we need those. So we're gonna get those in. So we've got the big dome, right? And now there's a leading line running through it that's got all sorts of details on it. We're just gonna put little notches on it. We're gonna leave all these other details out completely. Now, this isn't necessarily something you have to do, you could add more details if you want, but I'm trying to give you an idea of what you could leave out, the extent to which you could leave something out. Now these go to a square or a squared off edge. So we put that in and that goes down and it goes to another one. So we put that in. Now, there's a lot of windows and things, so let's just do it as minimalist as we can. We just put tiny little references to them. And now we go down a layer. Right, and we've got the same thing, so we just put some little lines. And we've got another one. And then we've got a double. So here, we can maybe switch it up a little. Those were sort of domed at the top and then we could just put lines for the straighter ones. These are straight, these are domed. Then we've got this massive long block and you can see that I'm actually leaving the whole bottom of this building off really flicking my pen at the end to show that it's disappearing, but that there's more. This is almost like doing an ellipse when you're writing. It's like there's more, but you need to use your imagination. And then we put windows, which are literally nothing more than a little flick of the pen. And that is as simple and as minimalist as you can go if you want to. So that's number five. And yet we've kept all the distinctive features of this building. 
the windows, whilst they are just gestural, are still there. These lines are still there, so we've got the right composition and makeup of the building. We've got the big dome with these smaller ones off of it and these lines. So we've got this distinctive features of the building and yet we've reduced it from what's in the reference image down to just that. And that is minimalist urban sketching. So there we have it, five very different scenes reduced to their absolute minimum in a minimalist urban sketching manner, very much choosing what was distinctive in each of them to make sure that they are still recognizable as the image that you're trying to use as your reference. If you've enjoyed this video, I'd really love it if you could subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it with somebody who you think would enjoy it. And if you really like the channel, I'd love for you to join my Patreon. I've got all sorts of great worksheets on there that will really help you improve your skills. If you don't wanna give this a try just yet, or if you were following along and you're looking for some next steps, I've got a couple of great videos that I've picked out for you. This one is going to help you with isolating your subject and simplifying your scene. This one, on the other hand, is a beginning to end sketch where you can sketch and paint along with me. And until next week, keep it sketchy.